Hi, I'm Doug Baer, and I'm here to talk to you about the architecture behind the VMware Hands-On Labs. So you may have taken one of our labs before, but this is the infrastructure that we use to host the labs and run the environments that you use for uh, when you take one of our labs. So I'll talk a little bit about from the beginning when you log into our portal to take a lab and go all the way down to the hosts that we use to run the labs. So if we start up here as a user, who uses a standard web browser to access our portal. This portal runs the VMware Learning Platform, or VLP for short. VLP gives us that user interface that allows you to see a lab environment and a manual side by side. It also provides things like user administration, so authentication, and tracking. This allows you to go back and see which labs you've taken and uh, maybe take them again if you'd like. It also helps us manage our content, which are things like our lab guide and our lab environments or templates. Additionally, if you've taken one of our labs and you like it, maybe you rate it five stars, that sort of information is contained in the VMware Learning Platform's content side. For this discussion, we probably want to talk a little bit more about the clouds, though. So from a cloud perspective, the VMware Learning Platform lets us decide which labs we deploy into which clouds, and then which users are assigned to which labs. So we need to have the ability to deploy lab environments into clouds. We need to be able to assign them to users. And then we need to be able to clean up when we're finished. All of that information and capability is provided via the learning platform. One thing that's interesting about the learning platform uh, with respect to assignment is we can deploy lab environments before a user actually requests them. This gives us the ability to start up a 10 VM uh, environment and not have the user wait 40 minutes for everything to start up. Rather, they can connect to an already running environment within about 60 seconds. So we use this online portal both for our VMworld uh, and vForum events in person and our online 24-7 portal. From an online perspective, we have multiple clouds that are available. We'll show three clouds here. Typically, we run two clouds out of the US. Some are in California, and some are in Washington. We also typically have a cloud that runs out of Europe, usually in Amsterdam. Now, this capacity is generally sufficient to run our day-to-day -day workloads. But for large events like VMworld or some of our large vForums in Asia, we need to have more capacity. Rather than spending the money to have that capacity online all the time, we leverage public cloud capacity. So for example, for VMworld uh, in the US and Barcelona, we had public cloud capacity provided by IBM and VMware Cloud on AWS. So from a learning platform perspective, it doesn't really matter whether we're running out of the private cloud or the public cloud. We have the flexibility to bring clouds online and take them offline and still keep our service available. So just to note these here, these are private and these are public. Now we have multiple clouds because this gives us a resiliency and fault tolerance. If something happens to a data center or a region, you know, we may lose the data center in California due to a power outage of some sort. We still have the remaining clouds online and we can keep our users happy. Any user who happened to be in this cloud that had failed may lose their lab environment, but they can start up a fresh one within one of the other clouds relatively quickly. Uh, one thing to note here is the uh, public cloud capacity was brought online prior to VMworld and then Right at the end of VMworld US, we actually decommissioned this capacity so we didn't have to pay for it anymore. Prior to the Barcelona event, we brought this capacity back online. So from a management perspective, uh, that's kind of the architecture. 
we want to dig a little bit more into the clouds themselves. So if I draw a line here. If we have an HOL cloud. We use VMware vCloud Director technology in each of our clouds. vCloud Director has a construct known as a virtual data center. And this is how resources are surfaced from the cloud to be provisioned by the VMware Learning Platform. This is called a VDC. To keep things simple, uh, you can think of a VDC uh, in our context as the resources provided by a vSphere cluster because we map them one to one. So a VDC is a vCenter and a cluster. Now you don't have to do it this way, but this is generally how we do it to keep things nice and tidy. Each of our clusters has a number of vSphere hosts. And these hosts are what provide the capacity to run our labs. Now within each of our clouds, we have multiple VDCs. This gives us additional fault domains and gives us the ability to decommission or uh, maybe reduce the provisioning to a given subset of a cloud without taking the entire cloud offline. So for example, if we have an issue uh, within a subset of the cloud, we don't have to lose access to the entire cloud. We can just segregate that portion, maybe perform some troubleshooting and that sort of thing. So what do these clouds actually look like? You know, sure, we've got multiple VDCs and we've got sort of segments within the clouds, but most people want to know what's the actual gear that we run here. So we take a look here at one of our clusters. I'll use one of our older clouds as an example. Uh, so this cloud is still running vSphere 6.5 because it's been with us for a little while. Uh, it's scheduled for rebuild later this year, but uh, this is an example of how we build our clouds. So this cloud that we're going to talk about has six VDCs. Each of those VDCs has 11 hosts. So basically that's a vSphere cluster. It's got HA uh, and DRS enabled, and we've got um, 11 vSphere hosts in that cluster. In this case, the cluster, the, the hosts are uh, Dell hardware. They're uh, PowerEdge, I think there are 630s. Each of those hosts has two CPUs with uh, 18 cores and they're 2.1 gigahertz. Uh, the hosts in this particular cloud have a half a terabyte of RAM and about uh, somewhere around eight terabytes of flash storage. Of course, they're configured for vSAN. And the way the vSAN is configured, we've got two disk groups. And each disk group has one cache drive, which is about uh, 750 gigs, and four capacity drives. Uh, I think those are about 900 gigs. So each of these disk groups basically will provide uh, 3.6 terabytes to the vSAN. Uh, the 750 is uh, roughly 20%, which is a general good practice. Uh, so we have two of these. So each of these hosts basically provides about 7 terabytes to the vSAN. So if we do the math here, uh, that gives us, uh, if we have 11 hosts, that will give us uh, 22 CPUs. It'll give us, uh, let's see, five and a half terabytes of RAM and a 75 terabyte vSAN. we do the math a little further to see how big this cloud gets, um, that gives us, let's see, 132 CPUs, 
some ridiculous number of cores, which I think is 2376. Uh, the RAM here is 33 terabytes and 450 terabytes of vSAN. Now that sounds really huge, but if you look at what our content actually, uh, actually is, we're not deploying individual virtual machines. We'll come back over here, say a, a general hands-on labs uh, lab environment is 10 virtual CPUs, or sorry, 10 virtual machines, 25 virtual CPUs, uh, 73 gigs of RAM, and a little over 700 gigs of storage. So that's one of our blocks. So if you look at the cloud over here and say, okay, we've got a cloud that's this big and our units of deployment are about this big, our workloads tend to be very storage and memory heavy. Uh, so in this case, uh, if we look at the math, it's actually the memory that is kind of our limiting factor. And in this case, we get about uh, 450 of these are the max that we can run in this cloud. Uh, doing the math here with 10 VMs per unit, that's about 4,500 VMs. Which again, sounds like a lot, but if you consider something like VMworld, where we've got nearly 600 seats in the room, this cloud won't even handle that event. So that's why we have to have multiple clouds. You know, we won't, don't want one big cloud, uh, because what happens there is uh, if something goes wrong with the cloud, we have one failure domain, bad things happen. So that gives you kind of an idea of how big our clouds are and how we construct our clouds. I hope this was interesting uh, or at least somewhat useful to someone. Uh, again, I'm Doug Baer and uh, thank you for watching.